Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hackworth, for, for being here. Um, in your March 10, uh, 2010 report, uh, you state that Medicare is the single largest payer uh, in regard to um, uh, Medicare, uh, in regard to health care. And you also go on to say that uh, for the next decade, uh, that that uh, cost is going to slow vis-a-vis uh, -vis the previous decade. I think it was uh, you're looking at 6 percent growth between now and 2019. It was about almost 10 percent in the past uh, decade. And um, I'm assuming that, uh, that uh, part of that reason is because of the health care reform legislation that was, uh, that was passed. And uh, the uh, idea was to pass legislation that bends that cost curve. We heard so much about that. And at the same time, creating better care, better health, and, and lower costs. Mm -hmm. And there was a very interesting article in the National Journal, I think it was last Friday, that um, it, it's entitled Adapt or Else. And they state that whether it wants to or not, the healthcare system is being forced to reinvent itself. The healthcare law is a clearinghouse of sorts for policies that have circulated among healthcare analysts for years but struggled to gain traction. And uh, isn't the truth of the matter that much of what was put into the health care reform bill were, uh, either came uh, from uh, MedPAC um, uh, advice or, uh, or uh, proposals that MedPAC itself uh, put forward? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, certainly uh, 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 there were many provisions that uh, were linked to past recommendations uh, of MedPAC. So uh, uh, bundling around hospital administrations? Yes. That was one of your recommendations That's correct. which is in there? Reducing hospital readmissions? Uh, yes. That was correct. a MedPAC uh, recommendation? Uh, Value-based purchasing aimed at rewarding quality? Yes. Okay. Uh, primary care investments and expanded prime reimbursement? Yes. Uh, payment accuracy, including reduced payments? Yes. Adoption of a comparative effectiveness research? Yes. And expanded fraud fighting uh, uh, authorities? Yes. Um, thank you. The other question I have is, uh, as, as you know, I think firsthand, um, I'm very concerned about uh, representation uh, for rural areas. And as co-chair of the Bipartisan Rural Health Care uh, Coalition, uh, we've been very, very uh, uh, active in trying to bring attention uh, to that uh, to that issue, and rural health care delivery has a lot of unique challenges, shortages of health care providers, and probably spills over into other underserved uh, areas as well. But geographic uh, remoteness, mm -hmm. low patient volume with disproportionately high Medicare populations, limited access to integrated health care systems, and a lack of electronic networks to uh, efficiently manage uh, health care. And I understand that uh, um, it's probably a challenge for you to, uh, to, and I know I know you don't do it personally, but it's a challenge to get that uh, that uh, appropriateness or proportionateness on uh, on the uh, on on the commission. Mm -hmm. But in your report, there's not even a mention of uh, of the word rural, uh, and I think it's kind of. Um, it's a concern for those of us who have yeah. uh, live in rural areas and represent rural areas. Is there anything you can tell us uh, that uh, that uh, we can look forward to? Is there, are we going to address this issue? Yeah. Are we going to get uh, proportional representation on that board? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Thompson, for raising this. We, we've talked about this issue uh, before. Uh, uh, we are uh, we share your concern about assuring access uh, to quality care for beneficiaries in rural areas and appropriate payment uh, for uh, providers in rural areas. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the very first report that I did uh, on becoming chairman of MedPAC uh, is Medicare in Rural America, uh, typically thick uh, uh, MedPAC report. And in every report since, every March report since, um, uh, there are, in fact, uh, lots of analyses directed specifically at the issue of fair payment 
um, for rural uh, providers. Uh, let me cite a couple examples. I, I said report. I, I meant your testimony. Oh, I apologize for that. Okay. Well, uh, uh, in this March report, let me just highlight a couple of examples that uh, are important. Uh, we've recommended changes in uh, the payment systems uh, for lots of different Medicare providers, but in this particular report, we talk about uh, fairness in payment for skilled nursing facilities and home health agencies. And we've made recommendations in uh, changing the case mix system used to uh, allocate those payments. Among the benefits from those changes would be increased payments for rural providers of home health services and skilled nursing facility services. So th throughout all of our reports, uh, there are issues like that where we're trying to assure accuracy and fairness in payment, uh, which we think is very important. Now on the specific issue of representation, we have uh, four commissioners that have significant uh, rural experience out of our 17. Uh, uh, we have uh, two physicians and then two the people. Gentleman's uh, time has expired. Uh, okay. but, uh, the gentleman from Texas, uh, Mr. Johnson, is recognized. For